are back with another best of three here in the EUSCC qualifiers. A great one on the slate for you after a 2-0 start to our day. I guess technically our second broadcasted matchup of the day. And already in EU, you can see the, uh, the, the, the play style, the cool, calm, calculated mindset of these teams out on the battleground. And just F6, after a great performance in the SPL qualifiers, able to look good here in our first set of the day. Gore joins me uh, for what will be our second broadcasted matchup, Gore. And this one has the makings of a good matchup as well. Yeah, I'm really excited to be able to see this one because there's a lot of players that you should know the name of, at least on one side. Again, you have to, to look at these teams. And I think there's going to be a lot uh, uh, recognizable, not just here, but like we didn't get to see Team Bisco. That team will have a lot of recognizable names, of course, Belt Slap. And I believe it's Winter Frogs. You might not recognize the name, but I do know a lot of the players on that team. Thunderhead we had just seen as yep. well. Like There's a lot this week. It just has me excited to see some returning faces. Agreed, especially after some of the performances that we saw these players put on a couple weeks ago at the SPO qualifiers, now back trying to claim their stake in the EUSCC. Bracket like starting a 12 to get filled out. A, I'm sorry, that was a bad joke. Don't it, don't even, it, it didn't happen. I mean, anything less than like 12 ounces is, I mean, I don't know. You get if there, there are people who will go out and get like a six ounce steak. Right, which like, you that's can. a snack. You can, but it leaves me starving. I think for yeah. some people that's the right amount of food. For me, probably not. Nah, this matchup, snack. though, definite name recognition on one side, some relative newcomers on the other side. The name recognition is, of course, team copyrights. B. Asriel, Ice Ice, Gunter, Okeanos, and Streak Up. Yeah. So not only coming into this yeah. matchup uh, favored Gora, I, I think probably favored in general to claim a spot in the EU SEC. I, I was going to say, you, you have to think about this. Blank Slate, if you just told me that there were only six teams in the SEC, and then you told me that this was a team that was playing in that, right? It, there weren't any qualifiers in this world for some reason. I, this is a team that I'd be like, okay, well, that's top two. Yeah, like, right. At worst, at they're top three. Like, There's right. no way I see this team being a, a bottom half SEC bracket. And so when you, when you think about the fact that you've got 16 teams here, you've got to be able to eliminate it, get into the top six, get to the SEC. This team has the power to do it. Not only have several of these players been playing in the SEC and at high levels for a long time, some of them have been on the world stage. I mean, Ice Ice has been around for years yep. and has been in multiple Worlds finals, things like that. I think this is a team that is going to be one to contend with. And when you add in, you know, Biazriel, Gunter, who have had a lot of experience, especially <laughs> lately, Gunter, someone who I personally love watching. But you have to throw in Okeanos Streak Up, who had a phenomenal, phenomenal performance throughout pretty much all of last year, I believe season seven as yep. well. It just, it, there's a lot of names that catch my eye here. And as long as they can mesh together, then I think this is going to be a team that, that is going to contend for potentially even first in the entire thing. Right, I guess that's the question mark. I mean, if, you, if you're trying to poke holes in this roster at all, it's can they mesh well with one another? Yep. I mean, we've seen <laughs> shortcomings of super teams before, and, you know, you got all this name power and, and, and in-game skill, but then the chemistry never fully connects. So if there is maybe a shortcoming core, it, it could be there. And honestly, they, the only other weakness I know to this team is that if they get copyright striked like three times, they're gone. That's right. You get three strikes. You got and you're three out. strikes throughout this tournament. You got to be very careful. Is Whatever the music they're playing, it got to be. Is the term copyright cautious. copyrighted? Do you think? That's a. That'd probably. Be, I'm not. gonna go out and copyright the word copyright. <laughs> I don't know. Can you do that? Probably not. I don't think you probably can just copyright not. a word. I mean, yeah, it when like it's just like when it's just like a, a common phrase. There's actually like a thing for it. Like you can't have something copyrighted the minute it enters like a public domain. Right. Like so if like. The idea of using, like, Google is, like, on that weird precipice, because when you say, like, I'm going to Google something, it's like a verb, but also it's still the name of the company, but that's only because you use that. Like, because nobody used Bing. Yeah, no. <laughs> I almost got, someone one, almost got thrown one, out of one of my computer science one, classes because they suggested Bing. Bing. <laughs> one guy who uses Bing. It's one viewer who uses Bing. It's just <laughs> the professor looked at him and right said, now. never say that in my class again. All right, let's jump into picks and bans for game one <laughs> as we discuss a little bit about the opponents for Team Copyright here. It's Otrio's yes. Angel score. And, you know, admittedly, we don't have a lot of film on this team. It's Duster, uh, Friesen, Otrio, Dazer, and it would be Reels which is probably the biggest name yes. power on this roster. But for this matchup, White Mustache is going to be subbing in for real. So I think, you know, an uphill battle yes. for this uh, for this Otrio's Angels team. But, you know, we've talked about team copyright. Maybe you're, the, the, the chemistry hasn't fully yeah. flowed yet, things like that. There is an opening for an upset. This, even though they're not playing today, 
I never realized how much I wanted to watch Streak Up play against Reels. <laughs> yeah. and like, so I hope there's a world where one day I get to see that. Unfortunately, it's not going to be today. But how White Mustache plays filling in, that's going to be like a huge lane. I think Dazer as a support is, is pretty solid from what we've seen in EU play yeah. in the past. But it's that conversation again, a little bit of synergy in the duo lane, but you're going up against Okeanos and Streak Up. Like, they are going to find pressure. It just depends on what gods we're seeing. Yesterday, we saw a lot of, of hyper aggression early on. We saw Bacchuses that were going frenzy, popping at 30 seconds in, a lot of things like that. If we see any similar styles in the duo lane here, then I have a feeling that at least for the first five minutes, Team Copyright are going to be able to yep. find that edge. I will correct myself. It is Dutcher, not Duster. So I want to give every player Yay, their due credit. Your apologies yeah. for the miscommunication. On the initial pronunciation, Amaterasu let through the first round of bands. That'll be the first pick here for Team Copyright. So via Asriel out of the solo lane, already getting a power pick. Immediately answered, though, Gore, by a Fenrir. Fenrir yeah. hasn't been the highest prioritized pick here so far this week, but has seen a little bit of play. It's it, it, because he's been like a high prioritized ban, right? Like it's one yeah. of those things like you can't get picked if he's never getting through. Where Bacchus is, is honestly where I expect to see Fenrir. He has been yep. the go-to support that we saw during the SBL qualifiers and plans that we're seeing so far here. I imagine that he just brings a little more power. It was really kind of a toss up a few weeks ago between him and Sir Ket. And so we'll see if, you know, something like that can make its way in. If Team Copyright want to go something as hyper aggressive. But right. for the Finrear, theoretically, this is going to open up a, an easy conversation. Whatever Hunter you have is going to follow up on easy damage. You're if you're looking for kills early on, this is the way to do it. Finrear is going to be able to set you up for that. And Medusa is going to be that hunter that you're able to set up a little bit early if this ends up being uh, Fenrir in the support role. Uh, Medusa has seen an increase of play here o over the last couple of patches as well, last couple of updates, last couple of tournaments we've seen. Medusa has seen an increase in play. The Crusher build, I think, synergizes very well with Medusa yeah. and that play style. And so an increase in the priority uh, with that pick. Over on the other side, though, Gore, I look at this Daji. This is something that yesterday LA own played in one of their <laughs> matchups and, and just sort of tore the enemy team apart. So you're starting to look forward here at maybe needing to pick in kit CC immunity yeah. if you're Otrio's Angels or picks that will want to have beats anyway. Good news for them. Finrir's got a CC immune ult. Yeah. Medusa, guess what? The CC immune ult. So, right. so far, they're, they're doing pretty well. RDO, we've seen go, at least a little more often, it feels like in solo lane, seeing a, a little more beads getting picked yeah, up whenever you have a huge yeah, ult like the Daji on the other side. Whoa. Persephone's probably going to need it, but you know, you're a mage, so you're going to be getting it anyway. She also does a lot of damage. Persephone has been one of those mages in the conversation when it comes down to it. You know, you have Thoth, you have Agni up there. Agni could potentially be swapped out with Persephone, and it wouldn't have surprised me because of how highly she's been prioritized so far this year. Wow, Gore. The beads burning is, is the name of the game here for yeah. Team Copyright. <laughs> yeah, because, it's... I mean, you're, you're picking a Daji oh into God. a Fenrir. You're picking an Ola run oh into a Fenrir. God. You're picking an Ares into a Fenrir. CC immunity and, and now a few of the ultimates for this Otrios Angels roster. I guess what you're really hoping for is that, you know, Daji can burn a couple sets of beads that'll open up. Aries or, 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 or vice versa, or, or yeah. vice versa, and and, and Ola run can hopefully cause some discourse in some of these fights, because hmm. individually might feel uncomfortable for a few of these team copyright yeah. picks. But as far as the whole team goes, you can only have one set of beads. You can only use your ultimate once in any given team fight. Can team copyright get the beads? Get the CC immune ultimates on cooldown. We'll go down to game number one to find out. And can Otrio's Angels pull an upset in game one? In Gore, they're going to try to pull an upset, giving Dazer a oh. move on support. Now, I'm really interested in both of these compositions because for Team Copyright, I see these gods, and, and you know, Amaterasu, I think, can bully early on, depending on the start that they go. You know, we might see a lot of pressure from the Daji over there, and it looks like they're going to go for the, the standard that we've seen in Season 9, not that, like, 2-1-2 two, two split that we were seeing a lot towards the end of the day yesterday. Right. But, you know, outside of the Amaterasu, the Daji, I don't think of Olorun as necessarily like a crazy early god. Ares, you know, with a couple of good chains and his flames really do help out early on and get damage out there. But with Olorun follow-up and specifically with Tiamat follow-up, I'm thinking of Team Copyright almost entirely at the, you know, 16-minute mark. Like, I'm just kind of chilling, doing whatever I can to farm until I get to that point. And then we're going to start picking it up. Of course, at level 5, you're going to see the spikes. Okiana is going to be able to find his ult. Ice Ice doing that, forcing a lot of the beads. We already see three pairs for Otrio's Angels. 
But it is something that's going to be interesting to watch how they handle it, knowing that at least the left side of the map, or left side skewing, seems to be a little behind. I think a lot of it depends on Okeanos here, when they're going up against a very aggressive lane. Yeah, already a little bit of poke exchange in the dual lane. This is not unheard of. Frenzy gets used on wave one. <laughs> that is mean! You're laughing at that? That is unheard of. It is. A, a, a 40 second gank in the mid lane is going to put Freeze in a little bit behind here. Dazer. Unlucky! What a start for Otero's Angels here, Gore. You know, a 2-0 yeah. deficit already to start off game number one as both uh, as both Dazer and Friesen end up going down in the mid lane. Maybe Otero can make something happen over on left. Looking for a Fenrir gank, but over on right, Dutcher is going to get ganked by Ice Ice. So there is just chaos, Gore. This is not... An EU-paced game that we see here. Kills traded out over in duo. Dutcher will survive. Another kill though over to Okeanos. <laughs> and Otira was able to at least grab one on the streak up. I don't know where to Break begin. Break it down, You know Gord. what? I guess I'm, uh, yeah, I'm going to roll it back. My laugh <laughs> was because, I, you know, I admit, like, I did say that Daji was going to be, like, uh, maybe the person to, to showcase if this team could survive early on, but... I didn't expect 40 seconds, if I'm being honest with you. That was very fast for what Ice Ice was able to provide. And, of course, the, the two lanes I highlighted as thinking they were going to be a little bit slower, the ones where the first two kills happened for Team Copyright. I mean, being able to pick up a kill for Ares and then a second one specifically onto the jungler as well, they got some really high-priority targets throughout those fights. And Okiana shows exactly why this Ares, like, he can be deadly, and you can't just kind of rush at him. You do have to be careful. Oh my goodness, Otiro back on streak left. Got to be another kill on the streak up. And so another individual traded kill. At least this time, streak up is the one who snags it on left. <laughs> uh, but it's Dazer who goes down. Of course, the opposite of what you want in a move on support, right? I mean, yeah. you're hoping that a warrior early in this lane is able to start to control things, but it's been anything but. Okeanos, two kills under his belt, burning away Otiro, but will not get the kill. And this is chaos. This is not, this is, this is even faster than like an NA SEC paced game. Seven kill score in two and a half minutes. And they're looking for more. <laughs> they're not necessarily pausing for any of that. I have to talk about how much I love this Ares pickup because it, I don't think it fully registered for me how much I enjoy it. But now being able to look at it specifically, you know, stopping some of the dashes. Dutch sure if you get chained, that's going to be problematic. Same thing for, for, you know, someone like Dazer, you can slow them down. But realistically, Finrear as well as the Persephone and the Medusa are all going to suffer if Okeanos is hitting these chains. And we just saw it in that jungle. If there's no Lacerate there from White Mustache to slow down Okeanos, then Otero's dead. Yep. Uh, you know, he just walks forward with the flames. The chains have all connected. You get the combo that you need, and that's going to persist throughout all of this. I mean, it's, it's so easy to get some of that damage out there. The hardest part is just hitting the chains, but the flame burn that you can do when they're locked down as yep. Ares just feels so good. And then once Streak Up comes online, it's going to be easy setup. But right now, I mean, it really is Okeanos kind of pioneering this lane and pushing it forward to what it could be and, and finding the full potential of it. Yep. Doesn't Ares feel like as all pause for dramatic effect? Okeanos rounds over towards the mid lane here, competing for some of the mid harpies. Friesen learns that a couple chains do end up hurting from Okeanos. Feels like Ares is one of those pick score where there's like a handful of, of supports that can really play the pick at a high level. And, it, and it's terrifying watching them play uh, in Ares. And then there's other games where Ares just completely falls flat on its face. Yeah. It, feel, it feels like it's very player-based and uh, you know skill-based pick from what we've seen in a lot of our competitive matchups. Okeanos making it look like the good variety of Ares. Could look better here as White Mustache burned away. Petrify, no chance. Okeanos, three kills now in this game. Streak up has been whittling down the health bar of Dazer in the meantime. Sanctified Field gets used. Doesn't end up finding a kill for Streak up, but another assist falls its way out of the left side of the map. As Ares is getting fed, Gore, no, Okeanos can do no <laughs> wrong. And you know what? It's one of those weird things. You streak up has a level up despite the two deaths and, and the ganks that have been happening. So that's helpful. But two levels on your support feels pretty solid, especially considering that rotation. Uh, you know, you still have the ult here from Okeanos. Blink is going to be down for a little bit, but I expect to see a lot. If you're giving this amount of pressure without the ultimate but prior to the level five, and prior to five minutes in, then I expect that we're going to see a little bit more of that throughout this mid lane. Again, beads are going to be available a little bit more readily, or at least CC immunity is going to be available a little bit more readily. But 
I think there's a, an easy chance for Okeanos to show up yep. and really <laughs> continue pushing their team to victory. I mean, at this point, it's just kill after kill. And it, like you said earlier, you might <laughs> appreciate it going on to streak up or ice ice or gunter a little bit more, but a kill's a kill. All right, kill's a kill at this point in the game, level-wise, equal. We're ahead of four out of the five members of Otero's Angels. So, uh, if that gives you an idea of where some of the pressure might be coming from from Team Copyright and where, where Otero's Angels need to be a little bit more uh, cautious on the map. So, Otero himself has a 2-1-1 slash line on this Fenrir already. So, that's where maybe, Gore, some of the return pressure can come from here an avenue back into this game because... Yeah, 2,000 gold in the grand scheme of Smite isn't isn't pack breaking by any means, but 2,000 gold at, at six minutes yeah. uh, is a little bit more hefty of a task. Well, no, Kianis is going to go up, and that's exactly the CC immunity you have to be worried about, but look, they're still ready to fight. Yeah, th and this is the exchange of ultimates we talked about. Okeanos used the Ares zone. Ice Ice goes up into the Palau, pulls back onto Dazer, but that is a nice move on all to return some damage. Ice Ice falls, Otiro will be burnt away this time. Gunter, the mid laner, back in the fight. Petrify is huge, though, from Otiro's Angels. And that is a great fight back in from the Chaos team. 2K gold deficit. Who cares? Three for one fight over in the mid lane. And that's exactly what I was going to touch on when you had mentioned that. We saw a lot of, like, 2K gold leads yesterday that would hit 2K at six minutes and then be stagnant for the next 10. Like, they, they'd hit 10, or the 2K, and then they'd just hold on to that. They wouldn't necessarily be able to push the envelope any further. And so I think that's something, uh, first off, we get to see Otrio's Angels fight back in, in a much, much cleaner way here. And Otero, you know, might trade out one for one with, with Ice Ice, but everything after that starts feels so much more, I, I want to just say clean, more confident from them. They recognize what they're capable of doing. White Mustache specifically here, yeah. <laughs> it, it hits way harder this early on compared to what Streak Up is going to be able to provide. And so you get a lot more from the Medusa, especially once Sanctified Fields are down. I mean, there was a, a period of time, and honestly, you could still kind of have this conversation. Oleron is pretty good outside of his ult, but also he's kind of an ult machine, right? right. You're waiting for your team fight to happen. You are throwing down Sanctified Fields, and you are benefiting because of that, or you're delaying the other team and, and making them fight around this giant, giant oppressive ultimate that you have. Yep. Whereas Medusa just kind of scroll, strolls up, says, look, level eight, this is where I love to be. I can hit you with an ult. Whether it stuns or just slows, it's going to open up a lot of opportunities, a lot less of a cooldown. So it's going to be up a lot more often. Makes things a lot easier, I think, for White Mustache to, to pop off. Yeah, it was a great – in, in the, the pressure that White Mustache must be playing with, uh, you know, with Reels not playing in this matchup, it's, a, it's technically a replacement player. So the ability for now the Hunter to, to step into that role and, and have a good start to this game despite what was um, an interesting laning phase over in the dual lane. We're still in the laning phase, we're eight and a half minutes in, but uh, the ability to overcome a lot of that pressure that Team Copyright was throwing towards left, uh, impressive and, and a good start now for this Medusa. Going to need a little bit of scaling if your streak up one and three ate a lot of those deaths that Otiro was sending towards the left side of the map. The Azriel is going to use the Dazzling Offensive here, avoid the Ragnarok, and backstep it as well. Otiro may have had an opening there, but instead chooses to disengage because Ice Ice is here. Palau up. First chain connects onto Otiro. Second chain good on a Dutcher. And it's a double pull back in, and Team Copyright senses an opening. And now Okeanos will get a double pull himself, but there is no return damage. Finally, a little bit from the Azriel and Gunter able to jump in. The opening is here, and Team Copyright. Knock down Otiro's Angels. I mean, that is exactly the way you want to see it. I was going to talk, if they hadn't fought there, about how the only thing I want from Team Copyright is to space their ults out just a little further. Mm -hmm. Because I think last time we got to see Otiro benefit from CC immunity from both. Beads had just come back up for Friesen, but they were a little too late to save the positioning. And, of course, Dutcher had to use theirs there. But you really get to see the full benefit of it. Ice Ice going in, pulling two people, and getting the other CC immunities right after that Fenrir ult had been used, it recognizes the scenario perfectly, and creates a, a pull scenario where now everybody on Otrio's Angels or Otiro's Angels are pulled into this one little spot in the solo lane. That tier one tower is not safe enough. You can't get under there and feel good. And then it's just free for Okeanos to come in and sweep up anybody who had CC immunity. It's now gone. 
And so it's a huge pull for him. And you had mentioned the damage wasn't quite there yet, but Azrael and Gunter are able to find enough to, to get a huge swing like that. It's just spacing those ultimates in such a way that they can read it. They've got another 90 seconds where they don't have to worry about Dutcher having that CC immunity. I think that's another place where you can start putting pressure on it. Pay attention to where those beads are. Pay attention to where, like, Otero's ults are. And then you're going to be able to abuse their CC immunity, or I guess lack thereof, outside of those capabilities, and really find a good home for these ults. Uh, how about this call from Otero's Angels? Despite the gold lead going right back to now 3,000 for Team Copyright, Gold Fury dropped by Team Copyright. No, Otero's Angels wow. will pick it right back up, and that's a nice... Infusion of gold over to Otiro's Angels. There will be an answer on the Pyromancer. Enough of Otiro's Angels had to make their way left. That'll give Team Copyright this objective for free. Uh, but the ebbs and flows of this game, Gore, it was a 2,000 gold lead. Remember, that's when Otiro's Angels won that three-for-one fight, but didn't totally mitigate where that gold lead was. And now Team Copyright have been able to build it right back up to about 3,000. But, but XP, really the worrying number here. 5,300 yeah. at 11 minutes, a three-level deficit. Over in the solo lane, make it two uh, as uh, as Dutcher is able to take on over. Two levels in the jungle, one in mid, two in support. And so that XP chart gore is really where a lot of the discrepancies lie. Do you think that it's a coincidence they're called Otero's Angels and then Otero is playing like Finrir, who I think is, you know, a more like male god surrounded by nothing but female gods? Right. Like, <laughs> is that like coincidental or do you think they planned that? Total coincidental, for <laughs> yeah. sure. If they do it next game, though, then I think right. it's planned. Like, it's Agreed. calculated when they go Agreed. At that point, it's calculated. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah. You, I wonder how many people in chat have seen or, or, like, everyone knows about Charlie's Angels, right? Right. How many people do you think have seen it? It's an old show. I was thinking of a movie. Oh, Please yeah. Oh, man. It. I forgot there was a movie. Hold yeah, on. The movie as well. Freeze in. <laughs> it's still a 20 year old movie. Going to get chunked down. Dazzling offensive. The last strike of that one will deal the critical bit of damage onto Friesen. So down goes the Persephone in the mid lane. This fight split out. Look yeah. at Okeanos. I'm just going to burn down this gap in the jungle <laughs> as Dazer and White Mustache attempt to walk forward, but no chance. I mean, you can really see the presence this Fenrir has cultivated for himself this game. But Gunter is getting aggressed on. Like, this is where you have to be careful. Okeanos has ult. Okeanos has blink. But it's that presence of who can you get, who can you grab. And they need their team. Oh, man. Look at these health bars just melting down. Okeanos wants to blink so badly. Slows down Okiano, say again. He wants to blink oh, so badly. Though. I know, you they just tell. kept him just in combat. I know, you, 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 keep the, uh, you keep the blink ready to go there if you're Okianos. But I mean, what a performance this support has put on. 4, 2, and 5. Nine out of the 11 affected kills. Yeah. Only a couple over on the right side of the map that Okianos wasn't able to make his way over for. Gory, you know, it's been a while, I think, since we've seen just like a hard, like, carry support performance. You might be looking at one right here. And honestly, it's, you know, something about Europe and Ares just seems to go hand in hand. We've seen Ares support. <laughs> we've seen Ares jungle. We've seen Ares solo. And every single time I think of an Ares, it almost has to be a European player. You know, Deathwalker comes to my mind for the Ares solo and just what they're able to provide. And so this is something that, that fits so well for them. And again, the amount of control that he's been able to, to bring to the team. Just the zone we saw last time without really having to use that many right. abilities. It was just the presence of Okeanos making sure that people didn't step forward. Because you don't want to get caught in the ult, even if it forces you to have your beads. You just don't want to have to deal with that. And you can see, I mean, uh, half a minute, not even, spent next to Otiro there, and he takes him to half health. Yeah. What do you think about Dazer here, Gore? You know, on the flip side of the coin, this, yeah. this Mulan support. Uh, had an impact. That's Okianos. We'll pull the beadsless freeze in on through, but no, the ultimate out. Actually connects onto Ice Ice for a decent little chunk of damage, but uh, I think Okianos will take that trade, get the ultimate out of the Persephone. Uh, you speak of Dazer, right? Who walks forward, uh, getting chunked on down here by Streak Up. Will be difficult to get on out as Gunter has jumped up and over, and the last bit of damage will be there by Gunter. Killing spree now for the Tiamat. Uh, Runeforge Hammer picked up by Dazer. Yeah. Maybe hoping that you're able to get out any bit of damage as that is a chunk of damage from Biazrael onto Freeze and should be enough peel here. I say that, but a dash in from Biazrael and Gore. We are starting to spiral just a bit here in game number one. 15 minutes in and, uh, and Otiro's Angels are not getting anything going on any side of the map except... Oh my god! Never mind. I was going to say except for a winning trade from Otiro, but Streak Up changes that tune. Yeah, Streak Up 
absolutely makes Otero second guess about everything going on in that side of the jungle. I love the aggressive beads from Beazrael though, because I think that that dictates the the mentality the team's in right now. We're seeing them get aggressive. They have this this gold lead. They know they have a little bit more wiggle room, a lot to play around with. Finrir is not going to go for the Amaterasu when he's going for result. And if he does, Azrael's been taking so little damage in these team fights. I don't think they're that worried about it. So use your beads, get aggressive. They get the kill and shut down one more time freeze and just to slow down this Persephone a little bit more. It gives another big lead over to Gunter. It's two levels still in that mid lane. It just feels like they are taking the small wins they can every step of the way. And now they've started to hit that stride. Streak up is dealing decent ah! enough damage that he can just box out of yeah. here like it's nothing. Yeah, yeah, decent enough, Gore. Yeah, to, to say the least here for Streak up, nearly completely completely turns around to three versus one. Sets up for the rest of Team Copy right though to rotate over here towards left. Dazer use the last bit of disengage to just extend his life a little bit further. White Mustache uses the beads. Petrify used earlier on in the fight with nothing to show for it. Friesen already used beads in Aegis, already used ultimate. Bye-bye Persephone, double kill for Gunter. And goodbye Primal Fury as well. Team Copyright can uh, I think have a mess up or two here, Gore, and still feel like they're in pretty good control of this game. 16 minutes in, uh, looking towards Pyro, looking towards Fire Giant here in the next couple minutes. Yeah, as, uh, and you had mentioned it earlier, like gold lead, e even if you ignore it, it, it's the experience that you're really starting to feel. Three levels in support, it specifically matters right now. Not yet level 12 for Dazer. They still only have that frenzy, and unfortunately, and we mentioned this earlier, and you had started to ask about it, but Dazer, uh, you know, Mulan support, you go at, you, especially with a build like this, you want to play oh a little God, more aggressive, <laughs> deal as much damage as you can, and, and try to get the lead early on. They just weren't able to find it. I mean, he's won five and four. I think the, the only, I want to say the only successful, like, returning Mulan support I've seen is wrong you and wrong you just happens to be one of if not the best support in the game right now yeah, who's that so guy? <laughs> it is definitely something that you know it can work out we've seen it work out several times and for the odd game it absolutely can but okianu shut it down really hard early on with this pick and it really opened up a, a conversation about why why Ares might belong here just as much as what we've seen out of typically the Finrir support, although it's jungle this time around, but also the you know the Bacchuses that we've seen as well as some of the other assassins. Yeah, this feels like Otero's Angels right now. Feeling a bit uh, a bit squishy, uh, level and gold discrepancy like we're seeing here. We'll do that. I'm not uncertain. Gorokianos can't just solo white mustache. I think he uh, could at this point. Be a chains out from Okeanos. This is a four versus one. Surely this kill goes to Otero's Angels, right? Absolutely. There you go. You get one. White Mustache puts the Ares down. But it's all those blue nameplates that you're seeing rotating to left that is going to flip things around Holy here. Smokes. Backs channeled, but canceled as Otero and Friesen backing away towards the tier one tower. Blink in from Ice Ice and a melted health bar on the other end of the blink in. Friesen gonna get pulled against the powwow as well. And streak up with a shotgun blast of damage, snags the double kill. And so Gore, we get a kill on to uh, Tokianos, maybe more of a, a revenge kill than anything, uh, because if you're Otero's Angels, you lose three in exchange. Yeah, streak up, uh, he does a lot of damage <laughs> right now. Like, it, it is it is wild how large, like, the autos themselves are, are nice, you know, having the magical crit being the only source of magical crit in the game feels really solid, I think, just for Oleron in general. But on top of all of that, it's very specifically like how much his abilities are doing. I mean, he's just ripping chunks of health bars away from Otero's Angels. And it's made things so much easier for the team. I mean, even there, you know, Okeanos dies, as you said, that he gets traded out. And yet the, the damage that they're dealing in the meantime is nowhere near enough on anybody else. Streak up looks at Dazer for like half a second and takes down 90% of his health bar, it feels like. Yep. And so it's these little trade-offs. You don't have a lot of magical protection right now if you're Dazer. There's a lot of health in there, but not a lot to stop Streak up specifically from hitting you pretty hard. Ice Ice, we saw how, how quickly that damage can come out. And they're playing around these beads cooldowns to the point where Everybody on Otero's Angels has had to pick them up, but it's they're still getting pulled. They still struggle dealing with it because of how much CC Team Copyright have been able to pick up. Because even if you dodge Ice Ice, even if afterward you were able to dodge Okeanos, there's a stun from Gunter, and then Azrael has one of the best team fight warrior ults that you can have, a nice big fat cone stun that you yep. can land in a team fight. And then there's still Sanctified Fields. Like, that's another huge team fight ultimate. It yeah. just feels like Team Copyright drafted really well to make Otero's Angels just uncomfortable. Dazzling Offensive grabs a stun here. Ice Ice, we have seen lose a trade or two. 
happens to lose some damage up against Otero. That is a value out of the powwow. You get beads out of Dazer and the Ragnarok away from Otero. Blink used defensively on the other end as well. Could be the final fight of this game. We are diving the Phoenix while a tier two tower still stands on right. Pull back in, that gives Gunter the kill onto Dazer. White Mustache desperately finding damage onto the front of Team Copyright. Mid lane Phoenix exposed, left side Phoenix exposed as well. With two down for 40 and 25 seconds respectively, Team Copyright have an opening. Yeah, this is not necessarily a free end state yet, but should be a free Phoenix, right? You've got 14 seconds left on this Fire Giant. That's the only oh thing that's God. working against you, but you have Frenzy and you have an auto attacker. Yeah, they're gonna be able to do this just fine. If this one, this left side Phoenix might take a little longer, but it still should be a pretty easy burn for Team Copyright. I mean, this is this is pretty much exactly the position they want to be in. Now they're going to be able to reset. They have a full minute to fall back, and Honey Fury is going to be spawning up in about 20 seconds, so they've got enough time to go and pick that up, strip away some of the jungle, and then fall right back onto the Fire Giant like it's nothing without having to worry too much about Otira's Angels. They have to deal with two Fire Minion waves here soon. So that's going to make things even more difficult to try and fight up against. Yeah, I guess the left side Phoenix did technically take a little bit longer. Yeah. But, you know, it's a matter of... Uh, like three uh, seconds uh, right. or something. It was a matter of ten <laughs> seconds versus uh, three or something. Uh, it was fast. And in, uh, in any other game of Smite, Oni Fury now confirms you're going to have fire Oni minions on left and mid. Got to be careful here if you're Otero's Angels. Nobody overextending at the moment, but those are the types of situations where Team Copyright could kind of pump fake a back. Yeah. And, uh, and catch Otero's Angels off guard. I don't know if there's a world gore. I mean, such an uncomfortable game state. I mean, Team Copyright wins this game 999 times out of 1,000. I don't know if that one time is a, is a fire giant defense from Otero's oh. Angels. Or you're hoping that you can stand underneath your Phoenix line. I'm also not sure it's engaging on B. Azriel, who's level 20, to everyone else's 16, 17, 18 on Otero's Angels. May not even be a fire giant fight. It's a grouping behind the FG pit. Taser. Uh, yeah, he's gone. Gunter, unstoppable at seven straight kills. Freezing will dash on away, but B. Azriel will close that gap right back. And then here's the team fight, how it rolls every single time from Team Copyright. One ultimate used, oh, one wow. after another. I haven't seen an FF in a long time there, Gore, but that game was ending. <laughs> I almost forgot you could. Yep. Like, I don't know why. In my games, I understand it. I see that. I see the surrender button when, when, whenever I need it. I completely forgot competitively like, that we could go from yeah. a spectator to a surrender. I think that, like, it's honestly 30 seconds from now that game's done anyway. Right, so it's something. Oh, right. the I, I think that is, is, is <laughs> it literally is just a, a a coincidence that it happens before the Titan yes. dies overall. But but realistically, I like what Otero's Angels like. You had, you had mentioned it. I don't think Azrael is is the the prime target for that. But I like what their mentality was. If they were able to catch Ice Ice, you go back to right where that Fire Giant fight happens. Four of them are coming around the pit. Ice Ice is coming in. If they catch Ice Ice out there yeah. and get a kill there then all of a sudden they're in contention for this Fire Giant. They're potentially able to fight, take that uh, objective away, and at least equalize some of the game state and put themselves back into the conversation. The fact that it goes so poorly for them is just a final nail in the coffin, right? Yeah. The, the minute everybody else responds on, on Team Copyright, it's over. Yeah, I think Otero's Angels were going to need like six different individual plays like that to fully equalize this game. Uh, Team Copyright in, in a chaotic back-and-forth early game, Able to come out on top of the gold and XP, and that just snowballs. 20 minutes in game number one. Team copyright on top. Can they run it back? Stick around and find out.
On a break that lasted longer than game number one, we are back after Team Copyright takes down Otero's Angels in game number one. And if you rewind, you don't have to go that far in game one. There's like seven kills in two minutes here. A lot of them happening in the duo lane and a lot of them going over to the Aries. That's Okeanos who, who gets off to a 3-1 start and just kind of walks away with this game gore. And there were concerns maybe that Team Copyright with, with, some, with the individual ultimates, that there were enough beads and CC immunity for Otero's Angels to counteract them. Like yeah. maybe just a Palau gets countered. Maybe just the Ares pull gets countered. Maybe just the just the Sanctified Fields gets yeah. countered. But but I, I think by the end of that game, Team Copyright did such a good job of layering their ults in those fights, but but spreading them really. Uh, and, and this one just spiraled out of control. And what I like it, it is even more is that they give Otero like the, this conversation. They ask a, a question to the Finrear and say, okay, cool. Do you want to use your ult to fight? Or do you want to use your ult to stay alive? And unfortunately, <laughs> Otero only had one option in that entire game. It, it was almost exclusively used at, for the CC immunity just to disengage because you need that plus beads in order to get away. You, you do have a good return kill early on that, that helped out. And, and like you said, there was a lot of blood early so that it wasn't necessarily going to, to escalate into anything insane. But then it just kept continuing for huh. Team Copyright, and they kept finding little picks. Sometimes it wouldn't work out like that, and, and then immediately afterward they find like the best ult combo I think they could have had. The damage numbers are just absolutely insane. It was after this fight in solo lane that everything, you know, it was a 2K gold lead, but this really solidified pretty much the, yeah. the extent of the rest of the game. It, went, it goes to, what, 13 to 7 at the time, and then there just didn't seem to be another successful fight back from Otero's Angels. Uh, Streak up turning around this 3v1 uh, was more of just salt in the wound, I think, than yeah. anything else for Otero's Angels. Actually, think back or early, there's what a 2,000 gold lead for Team Copyright, and there ends up being a 3-for-1 fight for Otero's Angels. And so, at least early in this game, there, there were moments where fight back was there. Uh, but yeah, that's only early in this game because the rest of it um, was just un unattainable. Too too high of a mountain for Otero's Angels to climb here. Friesen, a particularly rough game. Dazer as well on the Mulan support. Two and seven and one and eight yeah. respectively. Gunter, I think an unsung hero of this game. Seven zero nine on the team at. <laughs> when everyone on your team is doing five digits worth of damage in a twenty minute game. Um, I think that's a pretty good indicator that, that things have, have kind of spiraled. Their lowest damage, save for the front lines on, on copyright, were still higher than the highest damage for Otero's Angels there. And that's coming from the mid laner. I think Friesen had some really good ults. That's something that, that is worth mentioning. Like Even when Friesen had to use that ult just to disengage and for the CC immunity, it ends up working out pretty well for them. But the problem is that everybody's so behind at that point that it's like, cool, I CC'd them, they're locked down, and... Yep. We can't do anything, can't about, do anything it, about it, but mm, we got them. I showed them, and that's like that, that's the big problem, right? I think early on, it just spirals out of control. You had mentioned it six minutes in, there was a 2K gold lead, and then you know, a couple minutes later, it's 3K, and then a couple minutes later, it's 4K. It just never felt like they were able to, to alleviate that pressure that was the yeah. macro on the map. I'm not sure this is a PNB issue, but we'll see if Otero's Angels are going to swap some things up. Picks and bans for game number two. We're going to swap spots here as well. Team copyright in second pick. We have Otero's Angels over in first pick. So Amaterasu was first pick for team copyright in game number one. Viazriel was one of five problems that Otero's Angels had to deal <laughs> with in game one. So, you know, maybe you pick the Ama for yourself. Interesting though, Gore. Uh, I think Sirket comes to mind, you know, as far as do you, if you're in first pick, is Sirket the pick that, that you kind of leave open? Are you going to force team copyright? to ban that out. After the way game one went, though, I'm not sure Team Copyright are, are all that worried about any one pick in particular. No, I think they they planned their entire team draft really well, as it turns out, around what we were able to see out of Otira's Angels. I was actually wondering more about that one, if Bacchus was going to make it through or not, because I don't know if he's up at, at like first pick material right now. We've seen a lot of Bastet first pick, Amaterasu first pick, Bologna first pick actually isn't as surprising as I feel like it used to be. Finrear first pick has been up there as well. You had mentioned Serket. I think she could probably still be in the conversation, although that depends, I guess, on if people are already phasing her out based on changes right. that are yet to come into the game and things like that. It'll be fun to watch, but, you know, with Bacchus, if he had been up, I think that would have been something they would have fought over. Bologna is going to have an interesting time. 
Did we think Jormungandr was going to be no. a, a pick that we were going to be fighting over? No. no, I didn't either. Um, I wouldn't have even guessed in in the tin that there'd be a Jormungandr, let alone he'd be in the top three. <laughs> yeah, let alone second pick for uh, for team copyright. Yeah. <laughs> I guess there is some flexibility with Jorm. I mean, just, just because of how weird some of the picks were in game one. Um, maybe some flexibility, but I, I assume solo lane Jormungandr here. Um, there's probably, what, like a couple people on Earth that could play mid-Yorm at a high level? Not going to be a mid-Yorm. Thanks for answering huh. the question for me, Team Copyright. And so it is Thoth picked for uh, for Team Copyright, picked for Gunter out of the mid lane, and, and Gore Thoth has been a powerhouse pick so far here this week. Yeah, honestly, I think this is, is I don't want to call it bad news bears overall for Ojiro's Angels. I mean, you know, Persephone is really solid. We actually just saw, I, I still would say, Friesen doing a, a really good performance on Persephone despite the loss. But Thoth is just hard hitting from far away. He has a good potential jungle or support depending on where this Fenrir goes right next to him. It's a lot of easy setup and, and a lot of free damage that he's going to be able to get. Plus, I mean, you put it in there I, and you don't get to talk about this often anymore, but like Jormungandr's great at disrupting a team fight. Good luck sitting yeah. on top of a Thoth and, and, and onto a mage and slowing them down in a position where they're able to, to <laughs> you know, get knocked back, get co controlled, things like yeah. that, that where, you know, Jormungandr's just going to bop you away. Gore, if there wasn't enough disengage, I guess, in, in game one, Geb is, is helpful, I guess. The, ge the Geb shield is is nice in, in providing some, some CC immunity to a teammate. Um... But, but again, it's a similar issue where it, it feels like already if Team Copyright are able to spread out some of those ultimates enough and, and you know, avoid the Geb shield with some of those ultimates, burn the beads on enough of a, 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 cool, a cooldown, a cadence, Team Copyright have another really good, uh, another really good team fighting team here. Donza, yeah. Donza Burrow, I think, becomes very interesting because I, I think it's Mifflin who likes to call Donza the, the god of, like, win harder. Yeah. And if the duo lane starts to go the way it did in, in game one, and Team Copyright get out to any sort of lead here, it feels like Don Zaburo could just start to run things over. Will that happen in game number two between Team Copyright and Otero's Angels? Let's jump in and find out. Otero's Angels just looking to cut down that deficit that we faced a little bit early on in the game. Uh, but Gore, I think Streak Up and Okeanos here have a good chance in the duo lane to make some stuff happen. You know, it's interesting. I think that, you know, how Mifflin thinks of Dan Zabro is, you know, in terms of mechanics, how well he's going to be able to do if he's ahead versus behind, things like that. Because I see Dan Zabro and almost, like, it's just synonymous in my head with Panda Cat because last year he was, like, the only person who played it. It's so interesting to see where he will stand and, and specifically here how Streak Up is going to perform with him because it's a god that I think has a lot of potential. And very similar to, to like Jormungandr, when you read his kit, there's just so much going on within it, how his inter uh, abilities can interact with each other, how they interact with other gods, things like that. I think that there's a, a lot of fields that are going to get thrown out you know, between the like Consuming Bellow and like the, the, the Venomous Haze like splashes that are out there for Jormungandr, but also all the little pots, the taunts, the things that, that Streak Up can throw out. There's just going to be a lot of zone denial. <laughs> like, it's going to be hard to stand in a team fight later without being in something yep. that Team Copyright throws out. Yeah, lots of field score. None of them sanctified this game, though. No. No, uh, no Ola run for Streak Up. And that was a great look in game number one. All right, we're doing it again. Double stun from Okeanos onto White Mustache. But enough disengage there. Enough backpedal from White Mustache. But this is exactly what Fenrir wants to be doing. Yeah. And Ice Ice... Not used to doing this, but this is a level two gank and Good a stun stuff. in and a dash in and certainly first blood and it's Shriek Up who gets it 50 seconds into game two. And it's the Don Zuburo, the god you don't want to be getting a lead up against uh, is the one who grabs first blood. If they had been walking the oracles together, I think they might have been able to kill Otiro there yeah, as great. well. Otiro had started him up. Dropped them. Might actually engage on Ice Ice here, though. And that, that's, like, again, the small things. Ice Ice doesn't have a lot of health to work with. Yeah, it's exactly what you want, though, is, is an answer for Otiro's Angels. Erlong Shen, early in the game, Mannequin Scepter. That's actually, Gore, how you kind of, like, write it up, isn't it? The Erlong Shen with Mannequins early. You want yeah. you want to be having an impact now. And that's exactly how you draw it up. And so a good answer back. Get this Erlong Shen some presence in the jungle. Don't allow Ice Ice to do what we just saw on the left side. Unfortunately... Without a jungler, it's still happening. And now Streak Up's got two kills. 
days are still level one. Oh, good one. body blocks. And he gone, but no killing spree for streak up this time. Just another one for Okeanos. <laughs> level one Gebgor. Uh, two minutes uh, to level three of everyone else in that lane. Two kills to streak up. Uh, and the God of Win Harder is winning harder right now. I thought uh, I thought you were just gonna stop. Look, level, look I'm gonna tell you, uh, as far as like things that just don't feel that great in Smite, level one Geb's up at the top, like at least top five. <laughs> I mean, he just does not feel that great. You're you're big, you're bulky, you're slow. And, you know, if you decide to go roll out, you've got roll out, but no one's going to go roll out at the very beginning. You've got shockwave, so you've got to knock up on a, a long cooldown. Level two. So you're not really accomplishing a whole lot. You hit level two. Honestly, I'm going to be honest, it's not much better. Either you get roll out to save yourself, or you get shield to save somebody else. I'm going to keep it real with you, Dave. If they keep up this level of aggression, I don't know if that's shield saving anybody for a little while. Maybe it can slow down some of the stuns from Okeanos, but realistically, that's going to be one of the problems. The shield cleanses the CC, so y you have to be in there. You either have to already be stunned, or you have to be pulled, I believe, yeah. by Daji. I can't remember if it actually cleanses the chain or not. Right. But it's just those little moments where, you know, Dazer... I love Geb Shield. I think it's incredibly fun, but we saw him go from, like, top pick to middle of the pack once again because he can do a lot of damage, but not a lot early on. Yeah, when Streak of Anokiano score hit level 5 here, there's going to be a nice opening. 25 seconds on the beads for White Mustache. Wondering how far away they are. Might see another couple kills roll in. Maybe one more wave is what Streak of Anokiano's need. At any rate, Dazer is going to be a couple levels behind here, so you're going to have... And I, th I think it's important to highlight, you know, the reason we say Don Zaburo can, can really push these leads is because at some point, if you're Ot Otiro's Angel score, you don't really get it. You don't, you don't get to decide whether or not you're fighting a Donza. I mean, he just rides his rocket in there, and he stuns you, and he jumps on you, and there's not much he can say about it, even, you know, even if you burn your beads, things like that. So those are things to look out for now that Streak Up is at level 5. Okeanos is as well, but it's going to be a reset over in the dual lane. Should give White Mustache some time to farm on up there, but full level behind over in duo. Tiro off off to what was a good start, getting a kill onto Ice Ice, but that Erlong Shen hasn't repeated that performance yeah. just yet. That's what I'm waiting on, right? Erlong, mannequins, you've got a lot of good pressure. Hit level five, taunt will be available. That's probably going to be your biggest key, but you know, Thoth, his dash can get pretty far out of range unless you're able to catch it prior. Pin will be able to, to help chase things down. It just feels like there's a lot of escapability on the side of to uh, Team Copyright, which is going to make things a little more difficult for Otiro top to bottom. Streak up has alt. If I'm streak up here, I'm feeling myself. I'm riding that rocket in. Unfortunately, there's uh, a little bit of sustain rolling through, and so Medusa not quite as low as uh, I had initially thought. Maybe a little more poke damage. Would have found a dive there for streak up. Otiro's on the left side of the map. Purple buff is up. Okeanos is here as well. <laughs> There are, there are four members of Otiro's Angels kind of hovering in this area. Persephone on the back harp. He's over by mid lane. Uh, Otiro kind of telegraphing that. Not really so much a gank as securing a purple buff. Give White Mustache an avenue back into this game. Good news is that things have slowed down, right? We haven't yeah. continued the kill every laning phase pace. Well. Nice sidestep from Gunter. Oh, the dodge, though, from Friesen. I was waiting for the wow. final judgment to hit. Had it hit, Friesen would have been back in base, but... Get to go back on his own volition here. Channel the back, head on back. Some good dodges from both mid laners. I'm gonna give him a shout out again because that's just that's just good Persephone play, right? Like there's not many gods that are going to be able to dodge that out at that level and that quickly that you need to to be able to get out of there just in front of the shot. But you manage to stay alive. You keep yourself in a position where you aren't falling behind. And, and this is much more manageable than last time, right? The three kills, again, comfortable, but they're all in the duo lane. And it's something that you expect when there's a Finrear support and you're playing with a Geb. Like, you're not going into this thinking, we're going to absolutely slaughter them. You're going into this thinking, cool, late game team fights, level five, you know, plus. Once ults are online, Geb's going to be able to start providing something. We're going to start seeing stuff. And then, of course, late game team fights, you've got Cataclysm, which just does so much in your favor. And then you dodge out kills like that. Gold lead is kind of negligible. I mean, six minutes, it's not necessarily running out of hand for Team Copyright. That makes it a lot easier for Otiro's Angels to, to fight back. Ice Ice jumps in on Dutcher. Final judgment not back for Gunter just yet. Haven't seen the Jorman Gunter get involved in a team fight. Haven't seen the same for the Bologna that set. And I think that'll be a big pivot point in this game here, Gore, once both yeah. uh, both soul laners are able to get involved. It's going to be a little bit easier for Biazriel to find involvement in these fights. Picks up Teleport, whereas Dutcher 
Sticks with the beads. And so the the rotational ability of B Azriel immediately stronger. As far as being able to push out a wave, teleport into a team fight later on once it's upgraded. Um, and that's something Team Copyright are going to be hopefully be able to take advantage of. And if you're a Tiro's Angels, you got to be mindful of. Have to rotate Dutcher over earlier. No stun from Okeanos, but there is a taunt back through. Pull, connects, Keb shield, and sustain is good. And Otiro not pulled back in, but there's a rocket. And streak up right back in the back line. Petrify is massive from White Mustache. And that's going to set up some great damage here. A triple kill over the horizon if oh. the damage is there, but it's not quite just yet. White Mustache rooted in place. Final judgment. No mistake this time. Gunter grabs one. But now it's a mid lane battle. Gunter winning this one. Three for three as we stand. Yeah. Not bad for Team Copyright. Not bad for Otero's Angels. I think specifically White Mustache. Right, you know, no this one, yeah, is going to change things a little more in favor of Team Copyright. But, man, White Mustache. Like, look, if you're looking, if you're coming in as, as, like, a sub and you're like, okay, I'm going to make my statement, that was the statement. That was a beautiful turnaround, recognizes the scenario, gets aggressive, stays safe, and then it's just a little bit of greed from Team Copyright that ends up giving a, a couple of more kills over towards the hunter on the other side, but it's still a small plague, right? Grand scheme looks really cool, very flashy. Admittedly, you're only one level behind now, so that probably feels really solid. But you also expend a lot. Your beads are going to be available. That feels comfortable. I think going into the next couple of fights, we'll see what Otira's Angels are going to be able to offer. Again, not falling too far behind, but not exactly happy with where they've ended up. So around the Gold Fury Gordon maybe becomes the next pivot point here in this game. Just about 2,000, as you've mentioned. Otiro uh, has been involved in the last couple of fights here. Could be involved in another. A streak up walked at by Dazer. In and out of the stealth. This is a lot being invested in the streak up. You gotta get this kill and you gotta do it cleanly. And Otiro's Angels complete the three man dive. Dazer's gonna walk out beneath the tier one tower, but will the back be successful? Surely no not Dazer. if Okeanos gets the brutalized yeah. through, which he does. <laughs> and Dazer ends up dying, but getting a kill on a streak up at four and two <laughs> feels worth it at this point. How worth it is it, Gore? Well, you're going to have to ask me in about 10 or so seconds. Otiro pulled back through. And at this point, it's a one for two trade as Team Copyright rotate over to left. And admittedly, you know, like if it was one for one and it's just support that falls, going to be favorable overall to Otiro's Angels getting rid of streak up. Otero falling themselves uh, starts to skew things a lot more in favor of Team Copyright. And plus the way that they're playing the jungle. Specifically, look at Okeanos. He's going for a red buff invade right now. Should be able to secure that before Persephone gets there. Or Persephone's just not going to opt for it. Yeah, Friesen, you got to fight this one. This is the battle body. of our generation. Red buff dropped down and he got him by yeah. Friesen. So, and he got the smalls. And he got the smalls. So, small win. For Tiro's Angels to keep this Persephone relevant. We have seen Persephone, even in loss of score, do massive damage numbers all week long. And so I think a, a strong pick that's starting to return to some of the, the mid lane conversation here. That said, despite a kill on the streak up, still four and two, still ahead in this lane. And White Mustache not completing that Aussie yet. So immediately on map right now, an item advantage. Maybe something that team copyright can be cognizant of and, and force a fight around this gold fury. Beads down for why Mustache right now as well, which makes it an easy target for Okeanos to just rotate on over there. Look, there's a, a camp with an offering available on that side of the map as well. Well, you should show face and see what you can do. I think that's going to be, a, you know, where we see a lot of this priority, specifically, maybe even solo lane. Not sure. He takes a lot of damage, huh? He does take a lot of damage, but that's a dash in from Ice Ice. Asriel, the one tanking up this tower, and not a lot of damage finds its way onto the Ormond Gondor. Finally, a gank to the right will provide some parity here in this lane. Biazriel picks up the assist. Another kill over to Ice Ice. Tier 1 tower drops down as well. And, Gore, you talked about the offering camp that ends up getting picked up by Streak Up. So, uh, a good bit of map play. Everywhere on the map looking good over the last couple of seconds uh, for Team Copyright. And this is why you don't have much of a chance up against a Don Zaburo. <laughs> Just face plants a rocket into White Mustache after one volley of abilities. Actually, not sure that caught him, but Shriek Up does a lot of damage here. No chance, though, in a three versus one. The Aussie proc provides just a little bit of sustain in that fight. But, Gore, you get the one kill back on a Shriek Up, but it's, again, another kill to the Donzo Burrow. You're also spending the time of three members of Otero's Angels to rotate over and finish off that kill. Going to give the Pyromancer to Team Copyright. This feels like another game 
where everything for team copyright seems to be working. And it was a solo kill for Streak Up versus one right. split, three ways on the other side, two ults plus a blink used in order to kill off Streak Up. He gets he gets absolutely everything worthwhile there. Doesn't use any of the relics as well, so manages to have safety even available to him now after the respawn. So I expect that that's going to be one that maybe lives rip free in Otero's Angel's minds for a little bit. I also think that, you know, you're seeing it in such a beautiful way where it's just, okay, cool, you get aggressive, you got the kill, you lose the Pyromancer. You're, you're seeing Team Copyright play the, the overarching map a little stronger, you know, whether it's from small itemization things or realistically just from presence of mind, where they're putting their pressure, where they're able to find it. And as of right now, they've been able to find more just across the map in its entirety. They're staggering out their ults in a beautiful way. And they're engaging comfortably onto the members of Otira's Angels without <laughs> worrying about it. I mean, Streak Up's like the epitome of it. Yep. He's just running at White Mustache, daring him to try something. I can't believe Dazer is even in levels right now with uh, with Okiano, especially the way the early game went. Gunter takes the Persephone ultimate to the jaw, but survives. Sexy Aegis, final judgment awaits on the other end. Gunter dodges out the jump in from Dutcher. Got to be a kill there. A stiff breeze would have knocked Gunter over. Dutch sure is one blow in the wind, but Team Copyright are able to group back up. Brutalize doesn't do enough damage. That's a good peel from Dazer. Otero's low here, and that's what Jorman Gondor loves to do. I'm going to yep. work underneath the ground, pop back up, and uh, and bury Otero. So two for one trade over in the mid lane. And Gore, we've seen a lot of like good mechanical plays out of the mid lane here in the uh, in the last couple of games, specifically here in game two. Gunter and Friesen both sidestepping a lot, dodging out a lot. That was another good example of a team fight from Gunter despite dying. Yeah, I think that we actually get to see maybe more mechanics showcased because Gunter doesn't die for so long, yeah. right? Like, he does such a good job of just reading the team fight, recognizing where Dutcher is going to try to put that pressure, open up opportunities for his team. I also want to give shout outs to Team Copyright because, as a whole, the last two games, they've just had some of the best body blocks that I've seen <laughs> in general. Yeah. We didn't get to see as much of it in that last fight, but, like, just all around. It feels like they're a difficult team to, to get past. They are going to block your pathing one way or another. And that's just making things even more difficult for Otero's Angels. World Serpent's available here for Azrael, so even if Otero gets aggressive, I just don't know that this means anything for him. Yeah, he's just going to take his charges and head right on out. Dutcher used the ultimate there as well. And look at the left side of the map. It's an immediate grouping from Team Copyright around the Gold Fury. And so what right now, Gore, is about a 4,000, 3,500 gold lead is going to start to really build up. This final judgment gets used. Don't know if it was needed, but just to confirm it, it's 4,500 gold now. Team Copyright find themselves in the lead. And it was this this type of lead, Gore, in about two minutes in game one where, uh, where Team Copyright pulled that FG. And a similar pacing is there. You've got plenty of burn, especially if you're able to get Shriek up in those fights. Especially you're able to grab another kill. On to Dazer, who's going to get pulled back in and taken down by Okeanos. Three kills for the Fenrir. And Team Copyright had another. It's been a rough game, for forgettable game, really, for the duo lane of this Otero's Angels team. And you have to think about this. Level 12 Do to 13. Do I have to think about it? Again? Yeah, uh, it's legally required. Actually. Okay. I don't know. Uh, level 12 to 13. <laughs> I have to watch. I have to watch for the damage. You know, like this. Ice Ice is here. I thought he was going to ride that in. I thought that would have been a kill. Uh, I'm actually kind of surprised they're that they're, they're still beat, not going beat in. Huh? Beat Dan Dagus, though, I guess, for, for White Mustache. I don't mind the uh, the thought there. Anyway, Gore, what was yeah, I leg anyway. legally obligated to? You're one level behind if you're this finisher. You guys got to stop fighting for a second. Otero's going to die here. Yeah, should. As uh, as Okeanos brutalizes Good back shield. Through. Another good Geb shield, though. There are moments where Dazer has just been on point. With the peel from this Geb, that actually sets up damage onto Okeanos, but looks like the Fenrir will be the latest to escape. So a couple members of both teams getting out alive. Gore, go ahead. Dazer is exactly who I wanted to talk about because, you know, level 12 to 13, but 0 and 5, right? Like, you're really feeling the pressure that is put onto this Geb, and it's just not oh. opening up. Oh, my Does God. It again. Just another oh no. shield. And that's what I was going to say is, is, you know, if you can continually pick off this frontliner, and right now it's still not very tanky. But Dazer and Dutcher, you get rid of them, you're just at such a huge numbers disadvantage. But you can see, even though he's 0 and 5, how big an impact that Dazer's still able to have, at least saving two teammates there. I think Cataclysm's still a fantastic ult. His blink's not going to be available, so maybe Engage isn't necessarily on the list. But, like, the conversation around what Dazer can provide is still there, despite how heavily focused they've been pretty much the entire game. 
Van Gunther just wins that trade. Otira goes in, but immediately has to back off. No nine turns blessing means difficult to see a kill happening onto Gunter. Cataclysm used by Dazer. Palau beads out. Ice Ice able to use the ult in exchange for the beads in copyright. Be happy with that every day of the week. As there's no fury, there's a Pyromancer and a Fire Jet. Maybe a bit surprised. Team Copyright haven't looked for some of the right side of the map yeah. objectives. That feels like that one probably could have translated pretty easily into a Pyromancer, but well, hey, when you can get kills, you can get kills. Beads are up for Friesen right now, and I feel like wow. Friesen's taking a lot of damage, maybe unnecessarily, but Okeanos doesn't have any CC immunity, so that's a good deal. You know, I think this would have been a kill with just a uh, streak up, but just to make it a, a little bit more impactful. Ice Ice and Beatry will both rotate left. Final Gunter. Judgment nearly finds its way into a tier. That would have been nuts from Gunter. Had that connected. And the four versus two in mid lane, still just fine for Team Copyright. Now the scale's a bit more even as Ice Ice dashes beneath the tier one. Tower deals the last bit of damage alongside Gunter. Freezing gone for the third time this game. And Dazer's also gonna get jumped on. Still enough health on this tier one tower. Might take a little bit to burn it down, but uh, we have officially reached the, the snowball spiral out of control portion of game number two here. And uh, and Team Copyright will group up, grab themselves a tier two tower, maybe a pyro. Jorman Gunner's jump might be funny. That's only because Azriel's leaping away from that. Wasn't it just like get just, longer? Like yeah, because he just... <laughs> he's still under there. Right, he's still under <laughs> so the ground. So he just kind of goes up and down. Either way, I think that's just a good read fr from Team Copyright. You had mentioned it. Probably don't need two people on the left-hand side of the map, but you get a kill. Right, and then you rotate over to mid. All of a sudden, all five of you are there. You get a couple of more kills. You burned the beads earlier from Dazer, and then you get both relics off of Friesen. So now Friesen, for another two minutes, is going to be feeling the lack of survivability, the lack of safety that is available from those relics being on cooldown. And that opens up an even larger conversation for Team Copyright. They get the two Tier 2s. They get the Pyromancer. They get a huge gold influx on the back of that fight. Plus, the fact that they were already ahead, Dave, it just means that they're they're putting themselves in a position to continue snowballing forward. Fire Giant, you had mentioned it about, I think, three minutes ago as it being a two-minute potential away. I'm starting to feel like that timer is, is really going down now because at this point, all of the main neutral objectives, I guess an Oni Fury is going to be spawning up in about 30 seconds, so they've got some time for that. But even if Otero's Angels contest it, you've been winning these team fights pretty handily. You do have to be careful. They can get the upper hand still, but... I think the level lead, the experience that you're feeling, but, but realistically, the itemization, the damage numbers that are going to be different yeah, 9, should be the conversation. Yeah, I, I think you're already at a point here if you're a Tiro's Angels where is it even worth showing up around these objectives? Like, is, is the relative loss of losing a Fury compared to losing an entire team fight worth it? At least Dutcher is able to pull back one, and that's Gunter who goes down, so both mid laners gone, but Shriek up full HP in the back line is going to be able to collapse onto the rest of Otiro's Angels. Looking at a Dia side here. If all the CC is able to connect, there are a couple kills that end up getting pulled back. This one far from clean from Team Copyright. But all eyes have to be on streak up. Untouched in the back of this fight. A triple kill is there. And could be a quad around the corner. But Okiano should be able to finish the last bit of damage. As uh, streak up is going to pull off the Fury for himself. And yeah, it's going to be a nice long chase score. But I think streak up will be able to uh, solo out the Fury as it seems. Someone's gonna and get brutalize part two. Electric boogaloo. No, oh, the shield. <laughs> tell, me the, tell me the archer is gonna be the one that gets it. No, it's the tower. No, it's the phoenix. No, no, no. Guys, obnoxious. Come on. Dazer. So Dazer single-handedly here. Stupid shield. I think the shield is coming back like on cooldown with the brutalize. It's gonna give a kill over to Gunter anyway. Oh, all right. Dazer lives. Dazer, no chance, right? Single hand. Oh no! <laughs> Shrink up doesn't have alt though. They just, hold on, Wait, let's play this back. Start get, get the Benny heal music. There we music. go. No, no, no. <laughs> Finally, yeah, there we go. Uh, and it ends up giving a kill over to Shrink up. It's like worst case scenario. <laughs> what instrument is that? Uh, in that song? Yeah. I'm pretty sure know? it's saxophone. Is that a sax? Yeah. Yeah. Well. It's very often confused for a song called Gore, Wacky Sax. Gore, this is actually worst case scenario. Or maybe that's the name of the song. It might be Wacky Sax, which is from a, but a show called the, the Benny Hill. Benny Hill. Yeah. Right. It's actually probably worst case scenario because Dazer now has a massively staggered death, pulled everyone over to the right side of the map anyway, gives a kill to Streak Up, and now everyone from Team Copyright's there. <laughs> and, and, and they got the Fury, drive. too. Right, they got Fury. <laughs> um, 
Yeah, I think Otero's Angels and Team Copyright both thinking about what they want for lunch after this matchup. Uh, one more push, one more grouping and team fight seems to be all that stands between game two and being done. Yeah, I think I have to applaud Dazer because that was, one, it was highly comedic, but also did single-handedly stop there from being a deicide for a lot longer than any single support should have lived. And there is a world where he gets out of there. Like you said, it's unfortunate. Like, your pathing has to go somewhere eventually if you're trying to avoid everybody. Unfortunately, it leads to the right-hand side of the map. Now you need a, a huge team fight around the Phoenix. This is actually a good spot to try and get in there. You've got Blink in six seconds if you're Dazer. One good Cataclysm onto the back line will absolutely set your team up for good damage. We've seen what, what Dutcher and White Mustache can do here. Yeah, but we, Dazer's got to be able to get there. It's Ice Ice who gets Cataclysm. Okiano's actually rooted in place. Dutcher's found the back line. Another fight that is far, far from clean for Team Copyright. Dutcher wreaking havoc in the back. Streak up, though, still untouched, and it has been... The Don Zaburo all game long that has just taken oh things over. Streak up, unstoppable. Streak up, has a triple. Streak up, sees four around the corner, but there is enough mobility between Friesen and White Mustache that'll keep the Penta at bay. In Gore, it's all the carries that stay alive, all the front line just getting melted down on their engage. Otero's Angels. Probably happy with the way that that goes. You, you get a three for three, you do lose your Phoenix, so you're sad, but that's not a game-ending fight. They were three higher level, higher gold, and more valuable members of Team Copyright, all with Fire Giant. Yeah, no, you're happy with that fight, right? You're feeling pretty solid about being able to strip them away. The only downside is going to be that you have shown like some vulnerabilities. I think chasing there may be a little bit more shaky, considering they could have just fallen back and at least dealt with the one victory. Granted, they did get a couple more kills out of it, so you know you win some, you lose some, I guess, in this certain scenario. But You managed to prolong it. You've got fire minions on right. That's still going to be a problem. You're not in a position to really get aggressive on a neutral objective, so this Pyromancer should be free. And in a five-on-five five, anywhere outside of your base, you are not going to be able to do too much. But we've seen Dazer with a really good ult can disrupt the back line, and specifically Dutcher right now I, I think has been the saving grace. I mean, you got Otero getting a lot of damage but taking a lot of damage. Y you know, Dazer's one and eight. White Mustache has put out a decent amount of damage as well as Friesen, but, like, Dutcher's the one who is just sitting on the back line and making them uncomfortable. I feel like a lot of the health that I see disappearing from Team Copyright's carries is because Dutcher is getting back there and just giving them hell on this Bologna. And it's been doing really well so far. And I think that continued presence is what's going to potentially slow down Team Copyright. They have to be a lot more careful around these Phoenixes. Yep. Dutcher's put together a great game. I mean, 3-3-3, three, three, and three, I don't think, does the, the impact justice of this Bologna in the back. As, uh, you, you talked about level discrepancies on a few of the kills. That's no longer there. It's just supports who are within one level of one another. But you got Fire Giant for another 40 seconds on Gunter and Streak Up. Some great characters to have the Fire Giant buff on as far as melting down Phoenixes. Ice Ice goes on over towards mids. 4-1 split here. We see Otero have some success in the 1v1s up against Ice Ice so far this set. Maybe not this game as much. Four and five compared to three and four. So neither jungler having a knockdown drag out performance. Palau used by Ice Ice. And so that's actually a decent team fighting ultimate that Otero's Angels are able to burn down. I mean, being not only being able to burn down, but they didn't even have to use their beads for it, right? No ults, no CC immunity. Like they, they, they managed to avoid it pretty much perfectly to make sure that Ice Ice isn't going to have a huge impact. Beads are going to be up in three seconds for Otero, seven seconds, five seconds now for Friesen. And when you're looking at Fire Giant being a minute away, this is the kind of position you want to be in. All relics, all ults, all everything that you can have available there and ready. And then you have to start questioning whether or not it's worth it <laughs> for you to go for a Fire Giant defense. That's it. Gore, I'm calling it now. It's the same thing that happens in game one. They go for the They, the they walk in. They, lose, uh, they, they yeah. have eyes for Ice Ice. And then Otero's Angels lose the, the rest of the team. It's that's, painful that's my how accurate the, the state of the map is to be exactly <laughs> that. With Look at their positioning. I mean, they are falling back now, but like that that was a couple of steps away from being the exact same fight, but inverse. Wait, they're doing it. They're behind the Fire Giant Pit. This is unreal. This is unbelievable. Behind the Fire Giant Pit, same as game one. You're going to get spotted out here. A bit of a different way of it happening, though. Uh, goodbye, jungler. As Gunter melts down the health bar. It's a nice stun on the back from Dutcher. But is it enough? Streak up 
low. We haven't seen that much. Unfortunately, Grasp of Death flies by the left of this team fight. His team copyright able to rally, and they're going to move forward. Blink in, dash in, rather, from Ice Ice. Gets a kill on a white mustache. Now it's three low health members of Otero's Angels. Staving off defeat here in game number two, but it is not going to be enough. And team copyright, they're going to win an FG fight. FG not needed. Game two will come to a close. I do admire it. Again, I think a play like that can work if if the stars align for you, specifically if you're able to find just a single pick. Unfortunately for them, the first time around, they were you know just a few steps away from finding Ice Ice. This time around, they were spotted out before they could really accomplish anything on, on the side uh, of Otero's Angels. So you go to the Fire Giant. If it spawns a little faster and start gets started up by Team Copyright, there's a steel potential, like a blink over the wall, get a huge cataclysm potential. Instead, you just get spotted out and they go, yeah. oh, let's fight. And then they chase down Otero. Uh, he gets erased. Uh, the damage numbers, I think, were just too much to deal with from Team Copyright. Yeah, Cor, I think this is one of those games where... You know, Team Copyright were always going to be the favorite team going into this matchup. So it's Otero's Angels now in, in relative stomps in back-to-back -back games that need to find individual moments that they can build on. There were some Phoenix defenses that looked good. There were some team fights that were, you know, three for threes, even trades. He had some good fight back in game one. Little things like that to build on moving forward because this Team Copyright team was one of the shoe-ins to qualify for the EU SEC. And this set is an example why Team Copyright grabbed themselves the 2-0 win. In this set, we're going to take a quick break. When we come back, Gore and I will break this one down.
couple of the quicker matches that we had this week so far. Team Copyright take the 2-0 win over Otero's Angels. You're looking at like 20 minutes in game number one and then just over 20 minutes here in game number two. It, it just sort of feels like the story of a team where everything was working out. Everything starts on the left side of the map here in game number two and, and streak up puts together – <laughs> a 14-kill game yep. on the Donza Bureau. And Gord always feels good when we're on the desk and we kind of set the stage. We're like, look, Donza, if you get out to a lead, it's going to be hard to lock down, hard to shut down. And Streak Up just kind of ran crazy. Yeah, there were two ways to, to prove us right there, right? Where it's like, damn, well, he's behind and it just absolutely sucks the entire game. Or, man, he's ahead and he just keeps <laughs> winning, dude. Yeah. And unfortunately for uh, <laughs> Otero's entire team, well, yeah, they, they, they felt the – burn, I guess, yeah. of Dan Zaburo, the rocket, the flames, all sorts of stuff. Good solo kills when he's in lane. Of course, we saw a lot of, of dual lane pressure just early on in general, as you had highlighted. But realistically, this transitioned so well, whether it was solo kills, whether it was there was a point where it's a three on one where he wasn't going to walk out of it alive, but like just kind of stood his ground and dealt a lot of damage anyway, showcasing what he are capable of in this kind of position. Really good Boop. rockets, really good positioning. Late game is just able to chase people down like it's nothing. This pick you know, it's feast or famine. He, he was feasting every single time he stepped into a fight. Yep. Yeah, Streak Up was Jeez. just not going to be denied here this game. That's like a one tap on the white mustache. And it felt like even in some of these late game fights where Otero's Angels are putting up a good fight, you know, a lot of the front line killing one another off. It was just Streak Up rotating in at the end completely untouched. You know, Streak Up was able to kind of solo dive the back line at times it felt like. Ignored by some of the front liners. Uh, and there were just not enough eyes on the Tansa Burrow. And even though there were eyes on Tansa, uh, Streak Up odds were that he was turning around some of those fights. So 14 3 and 4 for Streak Up here in the winning game number two. Gunter had a couple of good games. Uh, Thoth here in game two looked good. And yeah. Some good moments from, from both, I think, Friesen and Gunter. You know, despite a, a losing set for Friesen, I think there were some moments. Uh, where, where individual mechanical play really stood out to me. I wanted to see exactly this, the damage numbers from Gunter this time around. Again, Friesen, unsurprisingly, top damage on the team. Dutcher did a lot that game as well. Uh, only 1,000 behind the mid laner. I think this Bologna w was an absolute nuisance to team copyright. But unfortunately, that nuisance uh, you know, was only really applied to Gunter. It felt like most of the fights constantly found the mid laner. And Gunter just would dash backwards, create that space, and slam damage forward. I mean, whether it was ults or not, you, you could just see the impact. Almost every single shot, just yep. chunks and chunks and chunks of health bars disappearing every time he decided to look at somebody. 23k? Yep. It makes sense. He was able to just provide a lot from his team as an artillery. It could have been a lot more. I mean, there were some final judgments that, that missed throughout yeah. that game. I mean, you could be looking at a couple thousand more damages and even from Gunter. Uh, overall, though, I, I think... This was a benchmark game for us for Team Copyright, and I think Team Copyright hit the stride that we were expecting this squad yeah. to. So great first look at Team Copyright in the EU SCC qualifiers. The schedule now joins us on screen. Three 2-0s to start the day. Of course, Team Bisco uh, being given that win. Just F6 finds a 2-0 win. Team Copyright also 2-0 win. So the Ogie Bogies versus Zinedine Zidane um, will be our final matchup of the day here, Gore. And I think... Zinedine Zidane is a pretty f humorous uh, uh, team name in my eyes. We, we've had some great names so far here this yep. weekend. Um, and the headbutt I machine himself, <laughs> I think, uh, is is maybe one of the funnier ones. And I've I'm going to give them credit because they've got Picarino, Calvin, and Delta, right? They've got a few players that I recognize on yep. the team as well showing up. So I'm excited to see what that matchup is going to have because there's a few unknowns there for me, at least, uh, on that team that are joining those three I just mentioned, but also on the other side. I think that's going to be one of the ones that's going to be fun to watch because it feels like it could be very close between them. Of course, Picarino as well as Calvin and Delta. Calvin, I will, I'll will i say this now because I don't know if I'll get to say it again at least this week. Easily one of my favorite supports in Europe because yep. of what we got to see out of him last year. He is absolutely phenomenal. I think Picarino as well is a name that is well remembered for really, really good reasons, not just because he had a team named Picarino Noobs. Yep. But I just think that this is a team that they should have some good competitive experience behind them. I'm excited to see what they can provide. Well, Gore, this one is a quick 2 0. Our next set of the day, our last set of the day, don't be so sure. That one might go all three. Stick around. More EU SCC qualifying coming up next.